<clears throat> the host will let you in shortly. Who do they think called the meeting? Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, sweetheart. Mwah. Looking at all your beautiful faces, I'm reminded of our chaotic attempt at a Seder last spring. We had our own four questions. Are we on? Can you hear me? Can you see me? And of course, is this working? Well, is it? Good. So, why the meeting and why the mute button? And no, you don't have to dial 911. You've all been asking me what I need. Well, I prepared a short list. Good soup for openers, not from the deli. All they know is salt, which not only lacks imagination, it makes my ankles blow up. No, something from your kitchen. I can make a quart last for three days, but please not all of you at once. Call ahead to be sure I have room in the freezer. As you know, storage is an issue in this apartment. A jigsaw puzzle. No more cats, please. Also, no more than 350 pieces because I don't want to start what I can't finish. It should also last for three days. A list of items that you want from here, things you've had your eye on but thought it indelicate to ask. I recently read a list of heirlooms that kids don't want anymore. Number one item, photographs. Honestly, photographs. Then came jewelry and tchotchkes, you know, the things Pop and I would have rescued as flood waters overtook the house. My grandmother's cut crystal vase on the credenza comes to mind. She hand carried it through Ellis Island, something I can't imagine now that I've seen the place. How ridiculous was it she didn't just pitch it into the ocean in sheer exasperation. Do I have any takers? Fine, you may ask me privately. Time, it weighs heavily these days. You've all heard about Evelyn. To those who have sent me a note, message, text, smoke signal, thank you. I'd certainly talked about her enough from the moment she knocked on my door to introduce herself. Evelyn, so full of fire and life and brilliance is now another star in the heavens and the vocabulary on that woman. You may not know that Webster's College Dictionary was produced right here in Cleveland. Evelyn was among the editors always knew the right thing to say. And when she corrected you, she did it with such tact, you were more grateful than mortified. Alas, she lived long enough to see language replaced by emojis. One could legitimately surmise that's what killed her. As much as I grieve her loss, I'm positively dumbfounded at how the world has ignored her passing. It's like 9-11 all over again, this pandemic, where deaths are now acknowledged with 150 words, 200 for the more celebrated. Anything longer than the short form obituary now costs a week's salary. Thank God they record the rabbi's eulogy so her kids at least have some record of what was said. But a Zoom shiva, please don't do that for me. What else? A challenge. 
I need something to do during this dreadful pandemic. Somebody dare me to write my memoir or better yet, make a quilt. Oh, good. You're laughing. Never did figure out which end of the needle to thread. A clear conscience. Michael, are you texting? Put that away right now or I'll leave all my china and somewhere to you. Where were we? Ah, clear conscience, which leads to being forgiven. Evelyn used to say, forgiveness should come after guilt in the dictionary, not before. She said how much time we waste judging people instead of understanding them. Yet another alphabetical mix-up, only she said it more eloquently because that was her way. What I didn't tell you, because I couldn't at the time, was that Evelyn was in trouble well before the stroke that killed her. She'd been losing her words, which made her furious. In particular, it made her short with her children, who, by the way, never failed her for one minute. She would rage on about what they did or didn't say or do. If I didn't know better, I might have even believed her. But then this virus hit with such gale force. It seemed to strip away her rage. And here's the odd thing, it calmed her. She didn't complain like the rest of us about her life, her care, her confinement, because let's face it, a studio apartment can get positively stifling. And therein lies the miracle, my darlings, and this new state of hers, she forgave everyone, her family, God, the whole universe, for everything. This morning it dawned on me that forgive and forget should always happen in just that way, in the wrong alphabetical order. In the end, Forgiveness is all about love, isn't it? I didn't want to wait another lucid moment to share that. Are we on? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Is this working?